this is a watercolor one that I really, that I really like and um, it was fun to paint uh, on the background I wanted it dark so that I could do light and you know with watercolors hard to get your dark things uh, so I had to go over it several times for the background but um, came out I thought very nice and this is a pastel uh, done on sanded paper and uh, I did that from some a picture of some roses and just uh, did them very loose and uh, same way with the I think I did uh, underpainting on this one of watercolor which I like to do with my pastels and um, then letting some of the paint show through and then with a really intense background. Oh, this is Ducky Love. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky Love. This is one that got into the uh, Glendale Arts Council show and I didn't think it would because I thought it was too cutesy <laughs> and it sold. And the one that I thought was going to get in did not get in. But uh, this one was fun too. This is a pastel that I did a watercolor underpainting. And this is a alcohol ink on UPO paper. So it alcohol ink works differently from anything I've ever used. It's um, a little unpredictable. You can control it a little, but not much. And so I just used three colors. This was a demo that I was doing for uh, Shimer, where I teach, and uh, I only have the three colors, primary colors. And where you mix them together, you know, you get the green and the purple and the orange. This one oh, I was saw, um, I saw that. taken from, it's an oil, and it was, uh, I had a model in, um, we were in France, and she was American, but she would, had been over there, she was a dancer, and so she modeled for us a lot. And she took on the, the role, or the image to me, of, of a true French person, French woman. And so, she, that was um, one to do, yeah. And this one was an old painting, uh, and it was um, acrylic. So I had just all letters in there, and I tried to just come in with some black gesso because it really didn't say anything. And so finally I just came in with some lighter acrylic and fashioned out this woman. Because I never know what I'm going to do on some of these abstract ones, you know. And that happened just to, a, she appeared, and I was able to save some of the bright color of the um, acrylic, the letters and all. So, you never let things go to waste. Sometimes <laughs> they'll have a new life. And this is an oil. Um, this was at the Shimer uh, Animal Show. I'm famous for my roosters, but... <laughs> and I, I did my little dog just for that show. Of course, he got rejected, but my hen and the four little baby chicks and then I was at um, I think fine art in the garden and someone came up and said that her sister had four little kids and they called them the little chicks and would she <laughs> would I do a, a cutting board for her so I did a cutting board from the, my image my painting image wow. and this is a small painting looks large here but it's from um, the Napa Valley vineyards and where you see the gold coming through the trees I made that up you know just to emphasize and you know played down the other part hmm. and this is another one on uh, UPO paper and it's um, um, rapid flow acrylics so they come in a little bottle and squirt them on and then the paper was dry so all of the, tur the turquoise or teal color comes in a line like that so it just uh, moved around and I sort of liked what was happening so I started coloring in between and then you know it just gradually grew I didn't have any idea what I was going to do but I had some 
things and they look like eyeballs when I got through. <laughs> so I was trying to cover them up and then I, the middle part was too dark so I started scrubbing. Well on you bow paper you can scrub right down to the very beginning. So I scrubbed right down to the white paper and I thought why in the world am I going to do with this big white spot right in the middle of my painting. And so I dropped some color in and it turned into a little flower. I mean that was Nothing I had planned, but it was like serendipity. Wow. That's and I it. used a little wash on the, the sky, you know, to make it sort of misty looking. And this one, I did a small one. And I always thought, gosh, it should be bigger. I just felt like it could be bigger. So I took my smaller one, which was like 24 by 30. And this was 40 by 30. And... Um, I did that. And I'm always afraid because you don't have the enthusiasm or or whatever when you're doing something, when you're copying something. But this one turned out and then I splat. This is the first time I ever splattered on oil. <laughs> oh, and there's my rooster I'm famous for. <laughs> yeah. I did this one at a workshop that I taught at Silver City, New Mexico. And I showed them, you know, how to apply the paint loosely. And uh, so he turned out pretty nice. A little bit more colorful than he actually is. Uh, he was a street rooster. I took one of my students home, and he lived in apartments, and he was telling me about this rooster. And so the rooster lived outside on this little green media. And he was seeking the shade, and, of course, he doesn't show up. His colors don't show up in the shade, so I made him, I said, go out in the sun so I can get a better picture. <laughs> but I like the way he was strutting. He was walking. Yeah. Sue, so what is your earliest recollection of exposure to art? It was in the first grade. I can remember it because that's the first time I ever saw any paints. And we had finger paints or something. And I just thought that was wonderful. But... I never saw it again. I didn't do any painting after that. Well, I did some, I had a little watercolor and I'd make clothes for my water, my paper dolls. So that was the only experience I had with using the arts. At what point did you decide, that you, did you actually decide you wanted to study art? Yes, after I was an adult and uh, I think I, gotten my business degree. I don't remember if I had or not, but I was influenced by my daughter because she was going to preschool and she did these wonderful expressive paintings and she was only like two or three. And I thought, oh my goodness, she's going to be an artist. Well, she's a pharmacist. She's sort of really left brain. <laughs> but she, it, she appreciates art. But I think she inspired me, and then someone at work, I was working at Honeywell, brought in a painting they did uh, in oil, and she took a class, and I, th I didn't know you could take classes to learn to be an artist or to paint, so I signed up for some classes, you know, while I was still working. Yeah. What turns you on? Well, when I go into my studio and I put out my oils, I love the smell of them, I look, like the look of them, and same way with pastels. I like the color and I just admire all of my colors and then when I create something I am just amazed. I'm just utterly, it's just almost like a miracle. Yeah. Are you a traditionalist in, uh, in pastels in the sense that you you never spray any pastels? Yeah, you know I sprayed one once and it just ruined my painting. I had to repaint it and so I've never painted, I've never sprayed afterwards. You use the term paint in reference to pastel, yeah. which I've heard often, but a lot of people, myself included, see it as drawing. Yeah, it is more like drawing because I always say that you don't have to be a really good drawer, but if you do pastels, it will help your drawing because you're seeing and drawing at the same time. Yeah. Good point. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Well, I love to read, and I'd love to be an author, but I can't write. <laughs> I'd just be there with just have one blank sheet of paper after the other, but 
I admire people that do write. I admire what you wrote one time for me when I had a show at it. Oh, thank you. Uh, it was, I thought, gosh, I wish I were like that, but <laughs> I couldn't come up with those words myself. What profession would you not like to do? Um, well, I don't like heights, and I don't like electricity, so I wouldn't like to repair the power lines, you know. And parachute jumping <laughs> out. Yeah, or that. I've never had any desire to do the, either one of those. <laughs> the painting that you brought with uh, you, tell us a little more about how the idea started, how you, take us through the process. Now, on this one, I didn't, uh, because it was on black, white paper and it was very difficult first to get my image on there I, I wanted to do these horses and then of course with my photograph you know how do you simplify or make something out of something so it's interesting so it's not just two horses and I uh, I like pastels because they have so many different colors that you can make if you come up and look at this painting you can see, you know, swipes of a lot of different colors, bright colors. And um, I don't know. Um, I, I think I do more drawing with the, with the pastels. But right now I'm trying to do looser, looser work. So I don't know what else you'd like to know. When uh, drawing on a dark background like that, Obviously, you were using yeah. light or light gray. A light, yeah, a light pastel pencil. And um, although sometimes when I'm working on my pastels, I have a charcoal pencil. And I'll redraw something, you know, because you lose some of the lines or something. But yeah, you have to start out light. And it's hard to start out with white. A lot of people like to use a white pencil, but it's, white's hard to cover up sometimes. You'd think it would be easy, but it's sometimes hard to cover up. So I usually use a, a gray or a, a burnt sienna type color. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used vine charcoal to start a uh, painting? Uh, I used to a long time ago, and not so much in pastel. I use those um, uh, pastel pencils. Right. But, but I used to use the vine charcoal when I was doing oil. Mm -hmm. And then now I took a workshop with pastel, and I do the paper with um, that fluid acrylic instead of watercolor because watercolor fades a little. Then I use the vine charcoal and draw my image and then I put the pastel ground on it with a brush and just swipe it on so it blurs the, the charcoal so you don't have that definite image and uh, so you get that dark in there. So that's a new thing I've been doing.